There has been another U.S. military accident overseas. A naval plane crashed while flying to an aircraft carrier off the coast of Japan. Some of those who were aboard that plane are still unaccounted for. KCAL 9's Dave Bryan joins us now with more on the investigation. Dave. Plenty of fallout tonight, including some political problems involved. The plane that went down is a U.S. Navy transport plane, and while eight of the 11 people on board were safely rescued, three others are still listed as missing. It's the latest in a growing list of naval crashes in the region, most of them involving ships that have raised serious questions tonight about how things are being run. The aircraft with 11 Navy personnel on board crashed into the Pacific Ocean. It was flying from an air station in Japan out to an aircraft carrier, the USS Ronald Reagan, 500 miles off the coast of Okinawa. CBS News reports by all indications the plane suffered a rare twin engine failure. Eight people were initially rescued by Navy helicopters, which arrived on scene in about 30 minutes. They were taken to the Reagan and are listed in good condition. But the search continues for the three missing personnel by U.S. and Japanese forces. The fact that eight personnel were able to survive this incident tells us that there was probably a very skilled pilot uh, at the stick who was able in some way to bring this aircraft down to the sea uh, in such a way that the plane didn't break up. The plane is a C-2 Greyhound. The Navy has used these planes for more than 50 years, shuttling people and parts to aircraft carriers at sea, a reliable workhorse of the carrier fleet that land on the deck just like fighter jets. And the planes have a good safety record. The last mishap was five years ago, and there were no fatalities. But the same can't be said for the Navy's Seventh Fleet, which is operating in one of the most dangerous seas in the world, having just completed three carrier operations as a show of force toward North Korea and was still engaged in a military exercise with Japan when the plane went down. In fact, during this difficult and deadly year, 17 U.S. sailors were killed in two collisions. The USS John S. McCain and the USS Fitzgerald each had collisions with commercial ships. In all, there were five accidents this year involving 7th Fleet ships, making the fleet look like it was amateur hour. The fleet commander has been relieved of duty, as were eight other naval officials. A Navy investigation concluded that three of the crashes were preventable, the result of widespread failures and mistakes. In fact, the fallout from these incidents was so serious that the chief of naval operations ordered a worldwide review of ships and staffing. Sailors killed in collision because we don't properly train. Aircraft that are crashing because they may not be maintained. These are the kind of issues where we need to not have a hollow force. Some experts say the real source of the problem is Washington, which is only operating on temporary budgets and creating serious problems for the military. The Department of Defense is operating on a continuing resolution, which means that they do not have a budget. And while there is funding for basic programs, they're all freezing. And so there can be no new starts or anything else. So Congress has not then done their job. Number two, the admirals back here in Washington have a responsibility to man, train, and equip the fleet. Nonetheless, the Pentagon warned North Korea it would not be wise to underestimate U.S. power and resolve in the region. The North Koreans would be very uh, ill-advised to try us uh, immediately following some sort of an incident like this. Uh, any military force can always improve their readiness, but let there be no mistake, uh, the American Navy is the most ready, the most capable, uh, the most lethal Navy on planet Earth today. Now, President Trump was briefed on the Wednesday aircraft cache at his Mar-a-Lago retreat in Florida, where he's spending the Thanksgiving weekend. The president tweeted that he's monitoring the situation and asked for prayers for all involved. Jeff, Lena, back to you.